if you have any money in the bank or in the markets, including IRAs, 401ks, stocks, bonds, annuities, ETFs, and virtually any other fiat money investment, well, I got to tell you, you better make take heed in what I'm going to show you today. Because frankly, this report comes from the OECD. They've been around since the early 60s. The U.S. joined in 1961, and they are critical in policy decisions. I mean, seriously, the most alarming financial numbers that I have personally seen it so far in my time in the markets. So what we don't really realize until it's too late is how vulnerable we are. And that's why you have to have physical gold and silver outside of the system because anything in the system is that vulnerable. So let's just dig right in. In the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, global corporate bond markets saw a significant and lasting increase in issuances, doubling from a yearly average of U.S. dollar $890 billion between 2000 and 2007 to U.S. dollar $1.87 trillion between 2008 and 2020. But the COVID-19 outbreak outbreak accentuated this trend and 2020 record recorded a historical peak of US dollar 2.3 trillion in issuance by non-financial companies resulting in an all-time high of 14.8 trillion in outstanding non-financial corporate bonds but since 2000 the share of corporate bond offering documents that explicitly mention share buybacks or dividends among the intended uses has increased from 2% to 11%, more than fivefold. Now, here's the reason why that matters. Because when a corporation borrows to expand their business, then they have a chance of generating additional income to pay that debt off. But when a corporation borrows for share buybacks or dividends, that wealth transfers out of the corporation. And so when there is a big shock that comes in, think Boeing back in 2020, taxpayers had to bail them out. So this is a very, very big deal. It's what, it's what happens. You're leaving everybody else holding the bag during the next crisis. This whole thing really ticked me off. I can't even tell you. I was completely obsessed with it. Okay, rapid developments in the corporate bond market have revealed some structural challenges. That's not good because that means that we can see it topple at any given moment. And these systems are so fragile and so vulnerable. That's exactly what we're likely to see happen soon. I don't know if we can make it to 2023 where they have all these big plans. I don't know. Credit rating agencies are mindful of downgrading triple B issuers due to their special status just above the non-investment grade threshold. Such rating stability concerns may limit the ability of credit ratings to properly inform investors about the risks of individual bonds. You see, when a bond comes out and it's investment quality, you can get a much better interest rate and pensions and some mutual funds, et cetera, they can invest in investment grade bonds. But once you go below that to a double B, these are triple Bs, to a double B, well then the interest rates go up and we remember what happens. Interest rates, principal. When interest rates go up, the principal value of the bond goes down. So that impacts any holders of that bond and all of those entities that by law in their prospectus, they can only invest in investment grade. They can't invest in them and they would have to liquidate 
their holdings. If they liquidated their holdings, that would drive the interest rates up and the principal down even more. So just like what happened in 2007, where the grading services kind of fudged this because who pays for them anyway? The corporations pay for them. So they have, you know, they have a reason to make sure that they stay at that triple B level. We've talked about this before, but wait until you start seeing the data on this because it's really pretty scary. I remember with interest rates anchored near zero, there has been what's called a reach for yield. Look, if I'm depending upon my investments to generate my income and it goes from 5%, well, God, when I became a stockbroker, it was up at like 12% on like a 10 year treasury, something like that, 10, 12%. Right. If it, if you're now generating less than you know pretty much zero, then you're going out on the risk spectrum. And this was all planned. This was the intention to support those stock markets, etc. You're taking more risk to generate that income. But have any one of you ever read a bond contract? My bet is no, nobody has done that. And every single time a central bank creates new money, what happens? The money that's already out there loses value. And that, by the time it gets to you and me, that's why you see grocery store prices going up and everything else, all your cost for everything going up. Real money supports independence. And we need to be independent in this environment, as self-sufficient and independent as possible. So what are the central bankers doing for themselves? They are buying gold. It's because they want to stay in power. They want to be independent. And don't you want to be independent too? Don't you want to be able to stand in your own power? But you need more than gold and silver to do that because you need to be as self-sufficient and independent as possible via food, water, energy, security, community, and shelter, as well as your barter ability and your wealth preservation. You need to hold your purchasing power. For 6,000 years, gold has held its purchasing power. 